I made my own chest roller, and so can you. But why make your own? Isn't it easier just to buy one? Wouldn't making something homemade look jank and cause everyone to bully me? Can I really make something that is safe to use? What if you're not a handy person? Can you really make this yourself? What about ease of use? Surely it can't be as intuitive as the big name brands. I'll do my best to answer all these questions plus more. By the way, there are timestamps in the video so you can skip around to any section you like. Firstly, a chest roller is not a life supporting piece of gear. If you check out the video here or in the description, you'll see how it is used in conjunction with the rest of the system. Secondly, I've made two versions up to this point. The first one was cut by hand in my garage, but after making it, I wanted something a little bit more professional and that did a better job of holding on to the pulley because I was scared I was gonna drop this. I took my new knowledge of what I didn't like with the version one, sat down in front of my computer with CAD and some calipers and drew up files to have this cut out. You can check the link in the description to gain access to all the files for every part on this chest plate. You can order through them or if you prefer, you can download the files and order from someone else. Using an online service like this gives us a much more professional look and saves us quite a bit of time. At the time of filming, the, all the files on Send, Cut, Send come out to about $63 shipped. Now keep in mind, if you order a set of two, the per set price drops down significantly. Lastly, we'll need a few off the shelf parts to complete this. Nothing too special. The things we will need is a single eight millimeter by 22 by 14 and a half U-shaped bearing. We will need two two inch slide buckles. We will need a pack of one inch slide buckles. We will need five feet of two inch webbing. I just get 10 yards. We will need six feet of one inch webbing. I get 10 yards, pick the color you like. We need a eight millimeter thick by 41 millimeter long pin. This one comes with a little lanyard and a button on the back to lock it into place. And then to bolt everything together, we need five M5 bolts and we need a M5 tap with matching drill bit. I purchased all this off Amazon and I think it came out to around $70, but do some shopping around and I'm sure you can find much cheaper options. So now we have something that looks professional at an amazing value. We recognize that it is not life supporting gear. All we have to do now is assemble it. So what tools are really needed to make this? The only one specialty tool that I would say you need to do this is either a drill press or a hand drill. The two standoffs, this one here and this one here, need two holes drilled that match up with the holes in the back of the plate. Now, you can do that with a hand drill and a steady hand, but I think a drill press is the best way to go. It's much easier to get those holes accurate, straight, and in line. That really is about the only specialty tool you need. Now, I did sew mine on the back, that loop, and that loop, but you could use the spare one inch slide buckles to do the same thing. Now that you understand what it takes to make this, let me show you a couple videos and explain the process of assembling it once you get all the parts. So from my experience, when I order from someone like Send, Cut, Send, it takes about two weeks to receive the product. They have one week of fabrication followed by one week of shipment. Everything I've ordered has come with the parts in a box attached to another piece of cardboard like this. It keeps everything organized and in place and free of scratches. Now, while I was able to get the plates themselves anodized, the other parts were too small for their service to anodize them. Before you add the webbing, you want to do a little bit of post-processing. We need to drill and tap five holes. The two standoffs get two holes each drilled out for a M5 tap. The two holes in the base of the standoff are 20 millimeters apart. Drill as deep as the bolt is and use WD-40 or something similar while turning the tap through the hole. Take your time and clean the shavings out as needed. I personally use recessed bolt heads and drilled the plate to let them sit flush. With the drilling and tapping complete, take some time and knock off any rough edges with a file or deburring tool before bolting the two standoffs and pin on. I personally drilled and tapped the hole for the pin lanyard on the right side because I am right handed. The three holes mark the bottom of the chest roller. Next, add the two washers we ordered along with the pulley to the axle pin, like shown here. Press the pin on the end to remove and add the pin to the standoffs. With all the dirty work out of the way, we can now focus on the webbing. 
If you can sew bar tacks, then sew a loop on the 1 inch webbing that fits over the 2 inch, and sew a slide buckle onto the end of the 2 inch. If you cannot sew bar tacks, just add a 1 inch and 2 inch slide buckle on either end of all 3 pieces of webbing. If you are able to sew bar tacks, assemble everything like here. Slip the 2 inch webbing all the way through the chest plate, then through the 2 1 inch webbing, finishing with a double back on the side buckle. You should be left with 2 1 inch pieces of webbing. Feed them through a slide buckle, then the plate, and then finally following back through the slide buckle. Adjust everything until the chest roller sits high on your chest and snug. If you can't sew bar tacks on webbing, then you can assemble it like this using extra slide buckles. You will need 4 1 inch slide buckles and 2 2 inch slide buckles. Again, adjust until the roller sits high on your chest and snug. Don't forget to assemble with the 3 holes on bottom if you ever plan on using this for a rope walker. Now sit around for just a minute, there's one more thing we have to do to make sure we do not drop the pulley off the axle. So with the way this pin and pulley work together, you press the button and you slide the pulley on. And it shouldn't fall off most of the time, but if you are, say, at the top of a pit and you press that button, you can drop your pulley off this pit. Now there's a really easy way to do it, I've or fix this, I've already done it with this one here, is you may see some small dimples in the shaft right here. All I did was place it in here, pull it as far to the side as I can get it, and I have a center punch right here and it's spring loaded. I just took it, I placed it on the shaft and I put a small center punch dimple right there. I put about four or five all the way around and that dimple displaces some of the metal in a way where it raises up around the dimple. I can actually feel a slight raise around the dimple and now I can't pull this pulley all the way to the end. It won't pass by because the tolerances are so snug between the center of this pulley and this pin that those few center punches right there were it. That was enough to keep it from sliding off. So make sure you do that so you don't risk dropping your pulley at the top of the pit. If you made it this far and you've liked the video up to this point, do me a favor, give me a like, consider subscribing, and if you want to see how to build the rest of the rope walker system, leave me a comment and let me know. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it, I'm kind of on the fence, but I have sewn the whole thing with some help from a friend, and otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. Hey Darby!